Perfect. Hey guys, um, so episode I don't remember. And uh, finally, I got my coach Paul on the podcast. So this is going to be a podcast about a Dutch accent versus a French accent. Uh, yes. So exactly. It will be interesting. <laughs> exactly. So finally, yeah. I'm happy to get yeah. you on the podcast because we started working together. Was that five months now? Four ah, months? I think so. Something you, like that? You, you start working with my fighters. Yeah, I think right. five months ago. And I get injured. You can help right, me with exactly. my injuries. So that's how we met. So, right. that's, that's so how we um, met, yeah. Terence started to work. Uh, Terence Said started yeah. to work with us. Like that Sunday, Sunday we show on there, and then so we started to talk, and it happened that Paul had a shoulder issue. Yeah. So um, what, what happened exactly back then? Actually, I got injured with in training, yeah. and how it actually happened, we we didn't know really, but it right. was there. And it stays for a long time. I did all kinds of stuff. Because you always had the stuff, right? It was always kind of back and forth. Up and up, up and, up down. and off, yeah. up and off, you know. And then, and then it stayed for a long time. I couldn't really get rid of it. Normally, you know, it's, I get rid of it. And then now it wasn't. So then yeah. we start working. Then you were holding the pads one day and clunk. Clunk. Yeah. Yeah, and clunk means ow. Yeah. And so we started, and I was like, all right, I know that type of injury. Let me uh, help you. Uh, fixing it, we can probably get you back to a good level because you there's a lot of stuff you could not do. Yeah. Like it was really hurting. Actually, yeah. it was really hurting and it getting worse. So normally, right. you know, after a couple of yeah. months or weeks, it's getting down, but it's getting worse. And you you yeah. helped me, man. So, <laughs> so, so the thing was like, yeah, was, but Paul, so good I'm going to explain who Paul is because yeah. then I was like, all right, I'll I'll fix your uh, your shoulder, but what I really want is to learn how to kick because I've I've never learn before i've never learned how to kick before so i did mma and everything but it was always toward what i thought was boxing turns out i wasn't doing that either mm -hmm. so i was a grappler and uh but i knew who paul was and so i was like please please teach me how to kick and then i'll uh, i'll help with your with your shoulder so it actually turned out to be unfair because paul trains me twice a week and I only train him once a week but oh. i was so happy <laughs> with the stuff i was like oh my, show me show me more show me more and so uh, i need to explain a little bit who you are so you started so you're Dutch, and then you went through the whole Dutch kickboxing. I'm I'm now I'm 40 years in the game. So first as a fighter, in in the 80s, like a long time ago, I'd hair then. You know, <laughs> yeah. a long time ago, I, I fought in Japan, but you know, and European title. You what know? was your weight class? My weight class was 61 kilo then. Oh, 61 kilos. 61 You're 135. Kilos. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. And then um, I. So did you fight the Thais then? Some Thais. I, I fight Japanese. I fight. I fight Thai guys. Ooh. But long time ago, it was yeah. different. Different world at that time. Eh? So so, now the sport is big. When when, when I was there, you know yeah. the. To go to Japan was something like uh, nobody oh. could imagine. Yeah. I got lucky actually, because I trained at a real famous gym at that time. Uh, Major Jim, and they had the biggest champion at that time. You know, the, you mean like he set the standard yeah, yeah. for Dutch kickboxing. Robbie yeah. Kamen, he signed the contract in Japan, and they always sent a, a, a talent with him. So, so that was in the contract. So, it was smart coach. He said, yeah, he can fight in Japan, but you, we have to send our, our talents. So, I get sent it with Rob. He had a, he had the main fight. I had a fight. I did good, and then they liked it so i stayed there for three months like in 88 long time ago i fight three times there then came back fight and then there was not really yeah. nothing to 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 do there i got in business so i get to earn money so my kickboxing career went off pretty soon when i was 25 26 then i really stopped and really getting charged but i always uh, i always uh, Stay hey, coaching yeah. Yeah. because I was involved, and actually I developed my coaching. And then after my business, uh, yeah. and then after a couple of years, I really focused on my coaching. I, I was thinking, you know, what do I really like in life? You know, doing business and working, or doing what I like. What what's my passion? So I start coaching. Then back to kickboxing. fighting, back to kickboxing, and then. I stayed with Major Jim pretty long time, and we it was famous. We, you know, Remy Bonjanski. Later, I was with Andy Sauer, and so I started doing that. A lot of fighters, and then I went uh, freelance, so fighters could could uh, yeah, hire could you. hire me, 
And then I did a lot of different fighters from different gyms. Just kickboxing or did you go boxing as well? Uh, no, just kickboxing. Just I kickboxing? was really like kickboxing, Muay Thai, a little bit with Marco Piquet I did uh, Muay Thai. So I was on the, on the striking side, you know. And then later, a couple of years ago, like six years ago, I started to get into MMA with Melvin Manuf. Yep. He was always with Mike's gym and then so you were uh, Mel yeah, yeah. Manuf's and then coach. he yeah, asked me for the last couple of years, he said, hey, really, can you help me with, uh, with striking for, for my MMA? And then I get in MMA. So I do a, now I do a lot of striking in MMA, not the ground game, that's different <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. So, but I'm a striking coach in MMA. So we did do that and then... All right, I want to backtrack a yeah. little bit because yeah. you lived in Japan for three months. Yeah. To fight there. Yeah. So you train there, live there, yeah, fight yeah, there. Yeah, How yeah. was that? That was because at the time, like it was yeah, unheard that, of, that, right? It was different world because there were no foreigners there. <laughs> I was in an apartment with two Thais, his trainer and a Thai fighter. Yeah. They put uh, us in an apartment so they could let us yeah. fight in different uh, different uh, matches there. So I was there. Yeah, it was different. There was no, no body, yeah. no Westerner. So everybody, when you walk on the street, <laughs> all the little school goes, ah! you know, and <laughs> want to have pictures. And that was <laughs> funny. Now uh, Tokyo is totally different, but it was yeah, different age, up. you know. Because we're talking in the 80s. So you were with Rob Kamen, who's yeah. one of the biggest legends of the sport. For yeah. the, cause not everybody knows that side of kickboxing. Because, no. like, for example, we have a lot of people from the US. Yeah. And kickboxing in the US, they had their own version, but not like the, you know, not like kickboxing like here with the knees, with the, you know, no padding. No, and everything. Actually, so, it was connecting at that, those times a little bit. And Rob was even, that, he's quite famous for kickboxing in, is, uh, yeah. in, uh, in the States also. No, no, because yeah, you had the WK, that was, a, that was a full contact system. And they connected with the with the European kickboxing organizations. Mm -hmm. So he was actually the first European champion, I think, who fought their Over champion there, yeah. and and won. And so he he got famous in the in the eighties in, in also in, in the yeah. stage in skateboarding. Well, Rob Cameron was one of the greatest yeah. of all time, if not the greatest in a weight class, because he fought the tie, he fought everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he set the standard, I think, in Holland, you know. And was he like your coach, your training partner, your friend? No, no, no. He's, he, he, we had the, the same coach, but okay. he, he, he was the champion at that yeah. time at the gym. I was just coming up, coming you know, up, yeah. first uh, as a <laughs> fighter. So he was, he was you know, yeah. Rob God. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, everybody wants to be like yeah. him. That's cool, though. So that, yeah, that was good. Growing up watching Rob Kamen fight in front of you in the same gym is a pretty cool. Yeah, that was, that was great. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was incredibly. Actually, that time, the gym was like world famous. They had yeah, the crazy, biggest right? champions, you know, in all kinds of weight classes. You know, they, they set the standard. Lucian Cabin training, some great names, you know, Fred Royers. A and lot after of, that, it became the, the Sakuriki uh, gym was... Uh, so you had like two famous gyms, like yeah, two famous gyms, gyms, and it was a Holland. big rivalry then. Yeah, you know, exactly. your Sakuriki, Majuri gym. Yeah, and you know, especially in the beginning, Majuri gym was really on, on top of it. I think it was Sakuriki was a tough gym, you know, and it's also smart coach, but in a different way. It was yeah. not as technically, but really hard really fighters, hard, yeah. and a smart, uh, smart business coach. Also, you know, so, he was always attracting the good fighters, but. All respect to uh, Tom Haring also, you know. I worked later in, the, in his career with one of his fighters and with him, really great coach So you had also. two different school of thought already in Amsterdam. You had yeah. like the tough and yeah, and then you had the... Yeah, more more like hardworking, tough guys. Yeah. And majority of was more technical. technical yeah. Also, of course, tough because when you're on, on top level, well, yeah. <laughs> you have to be tough. It's you know? yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no one is so, ever but, soft but, in that but, one. But, but Shakariki was well known for his toughness, and we were more well known for the technical, techno, technical okay. side. Uh, yeah, and I that, have to ask about this, because yeah. Amsterdam is not a huge city. No. Holland is not a big country. No. But people might not know this, but Holland, like, had, like, with Thailand, 
yeah. is the empire of kickboxing. Like, you, well, you know I, mean? like, I have to correct you there. Mm -hmm. It was for a long time, but now the sport is worldwide. And there are it so is worldwide. Many... Okay. You still have all the heavyweights, or 90 plus percent of the heavyweights. Yeah, the, Dutch the, people are big, don't get me wrong. Dutch but people yeah. are big. That's yeah. why we are good in heavyweights. Right. Tides but for the longest time, yeah. Holland ruled kickboxing with the tie, don't get me wrong, but the ties yeah. were lighter, yeah. like 60, 65 kilos above. Yeah. It was mostly Dutch people. If you look, yeah. like the greatest names. Yeah, like, we had so many great names. Right, and but so also in the lower country. classes, eh? you had, of yeah. course, Roman Dekkers. You had uh, Dekkers was, oh, that yeah, was yeah. But we, we had more. I forget a lot of yeah. names. No, but that's sorry just, about that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you had. Um, Somebody. I mean, don't get me wrong, you guys are very active as a culture and everything, yeah. but it's still a very small country. It is. You have ruled kickboxing, maybe not anymore, because yeah. now it's more widespread, but yeah. for the longest time, you own kickboxing with the Thai. So, and you, like, yeah. do you know, what is your idea on that? Why is yeah, it that the, you guys the, the, were the, so good? The, the thing is, I think we got lucky. We got some really, we were a karate, judo, yeah. uh, judo country, you know, yes. and we were yeah, good great at judo. that. Yeah. And then, in the 70s, we had some people that connected with Muay Thai and, and, mm -hmm. and Japan kickboxing. And luckily, there were talented coaches and they had some talented fighters and they put it on a level. I always compare it to, to, to our soccer, you know. Yeah. When we had, we had the luck that we had Rinus Mikkels and Johan Cruyff and Van Hanen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you had to need, have a couple of talents, talents and then good coaches. And they bring the whole game to that level. And now suddenly that's the standard and everybody is moving from out of there. And then they're coming new, you know, there, there are examples and there come yeah. new coaches in Brabant. You know, you got some great coaches. They see that, ah, we want to yeah. do that. And now the level is there. And now everybody's moving from there. And if you don't have that, the level stay there. You stay, yeah. you know, a little bit there. We got the luck that in the 70s, some really talented, good coaches, connected with some good fighters and they put it on a level and now that's that's the platform from there right. we the French on. had good talents they don't they didn't do that they do at all like they like judo like at some point you see them win and then they always fall down like don't get me wrong cockiness usually gets you because they get very arrogant that was usually with, with, with Dutch that, kickboxing yeah. also because we rule for a long time we got a in my opinion that's yeah. just my opinion we got a a couple, of, uh, a couple of years, very cocky. We knew it all. But sport is developing, and you see different countries, Russia, Eastern yeah. countries, right. uh, yeah. Australian, yeah. Italian, Spanish countries. You know, everybody's moving on, you know? And we stay in our own system and knowing everything. And we got a little bit lazy and cocky, I think. And then you see the yeah. level drops. The heavyweights, we are always there because we are big, you know. People but, understand how big the but big people are. That's why. And now the last couple of years, you see a lot of good fighters coming back. So it's coming back. We have some good uh, side, but we have some great fighters. We have some good champions now in all the organizations. Yeah. In one, uh, Reggie, uh, you know, uh, Reggie. Uh, Get his name. But, yeah. yeah, you know, but, but uh, we have some good fighters. Even lighter weights, you mean, yeah, yeah not yeah. just the super heavyweights. Yeah. So, so we're getting back in the game again, but we were low for a long time, I think. I well, think for it's almost. Hard, but because you stayed on top for so long, though, like you were the country, because even the Thai, if you look, like they, they used to rule the lighter weight classes. Yeah. And then, but like all those places, they have a tendency to stay within themselves like for example i've seen that with jiu jitsu happen especially yeah. with the gi where in brazil you had the you know the brazilian um, championship was more important than the yeah. world's because if you won brazil you were the king of the world right yeah. but then they started to change the rules because they didn't like like leg locks or you know well, stuff well, like well, that well i then, think everybody wants to protect their own little yeah. game you know so now you're good at your game and you want everybody to do that people yeah. from other countries and so you're protecting a little bit Everybody's moving on and you make yeah. your own little organization. Right. You only invite yeah. Dutch champions. You yeah. leave the good fighters out, you know. It happens a little bit, in my opinion, with glory, you know, too much. And then suddenly everybody is moving up and you're still in your own little right. bubble. Because you don't so, get challenged. And then you have to yeah. get out of your bubble. And it's happening now. So it's, it's, it's spreading again, you know, and we get some good but fighters. But it's fascinating to me how well Holland does 
in sports for such a small country, but especially kickboxing, because uh, the Dutch people are not aggressive people at no, all. They no. actually very, they follow the rules. They actually very like this. Yeah. And yet, when it comes to kickboxing, oh my God! Yeah, yeah, it's it's. Uh it's just, I don't know why, why, why it was, was that. But it's not translating to MMA yet. You but, do but, not but, have uh, an MMA culture yet. But no. Slowly. That, that's true. We don't have a wrestling uh, background. Yeah. That's, that's, issue, that's, yeah. uh, that's a big issue. We always were a judo country. Yes. Already in the 60s, yep. you yep. know, Anto Geising. Yep. Karate, we were very good, yep. you know. So we, we always involved in, 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 uh, in, uh, in martial arts. arts. So, so, so. It is a little bit in our background, you know, yeah. from a long time ago, but, and then it developed. Yeah, MMA, still not, but we, we have some good fighters. No, we, I, we, I we will be there see, in yes. a couple of years. We will have some, some good champions. Of course, we have, we have some good fighters already, you oh, know, no, Alistair Overeem, you know, right. the, no, the guy yeah. for, for more was, than 20 yeah. years in all the big organizations. Right. Uh, we have some champions, but some not really players. on top. But still. I can tell because the grappling is not following the kickboxing. Like Alistair Overeem, mm -hmm. those were just monsters standing up. Like those yeah, were we big have dudes. Some, we have some real good grapplers. Actually, yeah. uh, you know, in one, uh, the guy, the champion, <laughs> no, names. Yeah. Uh, I suck with names. So yeah, I'm yeah, with yeah, you yeah. So, yeah. So we have some good grapplers. You know, yeah. the grappler is not, the, uh, is not the problem. The wrestling will be the problem, I think. I think. Wrestle is, is, is the base MMA, for MMA. Yeah, you, you really need if, that. If yeah. your wrestling is not up to level, you, you know, you, you yeah. come a long way, but this, this, this small top, top yeah. there you need the wrestling, in my opinion. And you have to train it and learn it. And so. there's very little wrestling in Holland, it's interesting. Like, yeah, and yeah, the level is very low. Yeah, you never we, had, we had some good wrestling also in the, in the 70s. But it went out. Yeah. Not, yeah. not too many people doing it. It's it's. Once those kickboxers, like, so you're gonna need a yeah. few years. But once uh, a wrestling background can be developed in Holland, with yeah. the level, the, the talent of kickboxing, ooh, because yeah. the Dutch I can move so. well. Like they have footwork. They have all that stuff. When they can start to put that within MMA, I think so. I as think the heavyweights, so. it will be there. It will be there. It will, it will happen. I know, I, the, I, know, yeah. I know. I know a couple of trainers. They're already involved with with some good wrestling. And, you know, oh, it so will happen. Uh, we're busy with it, and uh, <laughs> so it will be there in a couple of years. Once we add that to our game, I think we we, we will be. Because like we people in the US, strong. for example, start to know about Rico because he was on the Joe Rogan podcast yeah. and everything. But you guys don't understand how big the Dutch are. Rico is 120 kilos, so he's like 265 lean, yeah. like fight shape. And he like was already, I uh, saw him fight when he was 19 years old. He yeah. was already huge. So, but that, that's nature. His you know? legs, oh yeah, his yeah. legs, his calves. Yeah. Once those guys are good at wrestling and grappling, once the super heavyweights coming, yeah. like the heavyweight division, you're gonna have like five yeah. out of 10 guys will be Dutch. Cause what's yeah. the striking at that level, oh my God, you guys don't understand how well they move yeah, for but, that weight. But to the, the, you know, you should be first, get your ground game together. Yeah. That's, that will be the best game. Of yeah. course, we are a kickboxing country, so we can change. But yeah. I think it's more difficult from uh, transferring from a striker to a ground guy than from ground a ground guy, guy to the striker. So in the couple of years, you will see that first people will, will mm -hmm. their ground game, will develop their ground game and then become better strikers. But you'll have guys that'll come with both. Because you see that in, in yeah. MMA at first, they were either grapplers or yeah. strikers and then they try to, and then that never really works well. Yeah. But now you have guys that develop their wrestling and then they have the ground game yeah. and then they have the striking coming at the same time. Yeah, we'll see this in Holland. When yeah. it happens, those super yeah. heavyweights, it's yeah. gonna hurt. Still, but yeah. that's my, that's my yeah. opinion. Still, I think you really have to specialize first in one thing and then grow from that and put the, at the other things. You know, there, you, you need to competition. You yeah, need to competition. Yes. You need to competition but in striking. So much, or, but you know this, there's so much ego in fighting. Yeah. So my problem with specialization is the one I saw with the grapplers, is they get to black belt yeah. and then they get to world champion. Then they go into boxing and they don't want to look at it like I'm a white belt now. 
No, I was world champion. So they think they're awesome athletes. Yeah. Grappling is not striking. I got news yeah, for but you. The, it's, <laughs> you know, MMA is a, it's, it's a really young sport. Yep. You Very see it's much, still yeah. developing a lot. You know, Definitely. first it was only Jiu-Jitsu, then it was yeah. ground and pounding. I know, it started when it was yeah, just... Yeah, and exactly. the wrestlers came in, it was yeah. only wrestling ground and pounding. Yeah. Now you see a lot of strikers coming in, you know. Yep. Uh, and the leg lock guys yeah, are the, not even there yet. Yes, and like, now the leg lock. That's another couple. So, yeah. Your attitude has to be different now. Right. You can be, hey, if you, then you're a world champion grappler, which is great, or yep. world champion kickboxer, or world champion wrestler. It's not wrestling, it's not grappling, exactly. it's not kickboxing. Mm -hmm. All great sports, eh? All respect for all the champions in those sports. But when you're MMA, then you have to put it together, get it takes your, ego your ego down. Exactly, <laughs> and you bring you it know, back. You're, you're, you're a champion, whatever. Does it matter? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then go back to... Ego is such an issue to deal with in fighting. That has, like, that's still the ego number one. Is, uh, yeah, ego is always... It's a, a big driver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's a big, uh, big that's opponent also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what holds you back. But so yeah. I can't wait to see the, the touch coming up. So yeah. you started training me. So I yeah. was fixing the shoulder like they know how, because it's always the same. Yeah. You've done a lot of rope pull and rope push. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I but dream then, of those. Yeah. <laughs> We got into so more like you taught me to mm -hmm. kick, taught me. You're teaching yeah. me to kick and including uh, boxing and stuff like that. And it was for me it was fascinating because I thought I had footwork and I didn't. No. You making me work nonstop on footwork, footwork, footwork mm -hmm. first, which was interesting because at the same time I started to do the sprinting yeah. with uh, Janina, yeah. and so we saw a lot of common ground between the two to yeah. the point where I want her to do kickboxing and I want the kickboxers to do sprinting. Yeah. So most of your stuff was like through the feet, basically. That's yeah, yeah, mostly yeah. what you're teaching me first. Yeah. That, that's what I find interesting, you know, through the years, I, I start realizing that everything is from the feet and it's yeah. the little push, you know, the feet work. Yeah, we have to stand up to let you see, but I did some, I did some education, you know, you, we, had to, we had to figure out how, uh, what muscles are you, uh, are you using, you know, for, for the power programs, you know, that was in yeah. my education. So I, I was thinking, yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole uh, chain, stretch chain from feet, knee, hip, to your arm. So it's a lot of feet pushing. And when I punch, I can only stretch my arm, but when I push from out of my back foot, bam, I give a little bit more power. And yeah. it's the same with the kick. So you're always pushing. Now you're going to sprint. Hey, yeah. what is sprinting? It's bop, bop, bop. Yeah. it's Always. the explosion from the foot. There you go, and then you transfer it to your arm, to your leg for a kick. Yeah. Okay. So then I find, you know, the connection. Hey, sprinting is a little bit the same, and also the attitude I like it because when you sprint, it's always boom, boom. You have to go. You know, you cannot go. That's something you told me so many times, yeah. is that people, like, they start slowing and then try to ramp up on a kick. They yeah. start small and go, yeah, you, you see whereas it. what you want is yeah. instant. And it was funny, the gym where I trained developed a little bit in that, in that working load, I say, you know, it's like boom, 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 and I like... Yeah, like think so fast, we, like we got the too. discussion with that. That's why I left the gym also. <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, different opinions can happen. It's it's not a problem. There are different ways yeah. always to do things. But you know, I like this this explosiveness. You know, and you have to think explosive when you're fighting. It's yeah. all and especially in MMA, it's it's not a working sport. It's a momentum sport. You yeah. walk, you you you, know, you you move, you move, and suddenly, bam! You have to yeah. be there, and then you have to combine or or right. Wrestling make a takedown. And, and yeah. once you're on the ground, even when you're on the ground, you're in position. You <laughs> boom! You have to explode yeah. to get out. Or, you know to pull in. And, and you see that when you specialize, you can get away with that vroom, a little bit more. Like in Jiu Jitsu, they slow down because they control position and everything. Yeah. But in MMA, you can't do that because the strikes coming. Yeah. So that takes you out of the stuff, and suddenly you have to be able to respond bam, yeah. way faster. So I always like that approach that you have versus yeah. that diesel like yeah, going up, which a lot of people advise. But, but, but then again, I have to interrupt you. That yeah. Then again, there's, there's a lot to say for different things. You know, you have always. different ways to become great. But on the end, I think explosion <laughs> is 
pure, pure, when you, when you have the pure greatness, all the guys will be explosive, you know, the working Fast. guys, uh, yeah. you know, the diesels. Yeah. They will be good, but the special ones will be always explosive and have good timing. So, but there are different ways to do things. Yeah. So, a lot of people, I like that working yeah. pace, you know, <laughs> you know, make people tired, just yeah. drag them out, drag them I out. Can tell you that. And you get, a, you get away with that for a long time. But I think on the end, you get there, but this last little step to be, become a real champion. In that. You need that. And and I that's like my approach. See, that's my sure. opinion. At and least, I like right? when you said that what you liked also about sprinting is the, the mental approach to it. Yeah. Like they have to think fast. Yeah. Sprinters are very emotional. Trust me on that one. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> he knows. It, yeah, oh, I know very well. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's crazy how it fascinates me. Um, that's why when I started to training with Janina is what interests me the most is that approach to everything is bah! Like when yeah. she sprints, she's gone already. She yeah. doesn't go like, I'm taking a step forward and then I'm going. It's not like, it's yeah. almost like unconscious, she's gone. Yeah. It's like an insect, you know, like just as boom. a reflex, boom, she's gone. Yeah. It's, it's a, there's a way of thinking there that, that I find. I, I try to explain it sometimes, but you see, see in characters also, you have different yes. characters. Yeah, they, yes, you have some there There's a personality. Uh, yeah. You know, personalities, they're yeah. like, uh, you know, yeah. and when you hit them, somebody, hey, you know, yeah. <laughs> or you have people and you hit somebody, boom, they're yeah. there, you know, yeah. explosiveness. It's a character, it's it's also physically, you know, you know where you're a fast it. twitch yeah. guy, you know, you will be yeah. different than a slow yeah. twitch guy or in between, you have all those twitches in between yeah. and everything, but that's one thing, but still there's always this little... You can train some of train, it, yeah. There's that you can approach, train it yeah. for, for a little bit. You know, there are people really not like that, but you can train it, and there are different ways to train it. I try always to figure out how I can get there, you know? Right, so. but that's what, and that, that's very interesting because outside of just you training me uh, and me fixing your shoulder, we talk a lot about that. Yeah. Like we see the same thing. So me coming from, I mean, I used to yeah. do MMA, but for the last 10, 15 years, I've been more toward pure training in the gym, yeah. CrossFit, strongman, stuff like that, while doing Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. But we see the same thing. Like for example, I find the one sprint a week interesting, not just to learn to run fast, yeah. but that mentality, that training the nervous system you to train go- train the nerve boom. system, yeah. That's, that, that's yeah. the important part. You have to train the nerve system to explode, you know, that this- it's, I don't think people understand how uncomfortable yeah. it is mentally yeah. to go, bah, not yeah. once, but yeah. for like, you know, bah, 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 and then yeah. relax, bah, 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 yeah. and then do that for an hour. And like, that, yeah, it's and exhausting that's, mentally yeah. to always go, no, 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 move faster. And like, it, and it, it has to be, uh, you have to have a good concentration yes. level constantly. So much. You have yeah. to be aware, you relax, boom! Yeah. You have to be aware, boom! You know, and that for five rounds, focus, or five like minutes, yeah. when you're champion, <laughs> or yeah. three rounds, yeah. five minutes, it's exhausting and it's difficult because you get tired physically also, you know? Mentally. So you have to keep mentally yeah. very focused on that explosion constantly. That's one part, and then physically, of course. Of course. But, but mentally but I, is... I find the physical part, like, I know how to train. So yeah. to me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I just need to train better. Yeah. But that mental exhaustion of doing an hour with you, yeah. of always, no, move faster. Come on, boom, more, fa faster, faster, don't relax. Yeah. And, but you have to be fully focused like that nonstop. This yeah. is why I think the part that I enjoy the most, because I feel like I have to learn. Every time it's like, no, learn faster. Come on, faster. Move faster, yeah. but learn faster. Absorb, yeah. absorb, absorb. absorb. Oh, it's so much fun. But, but, but I'm enjoying I, it so I like much. speed anyway, because yeah. speed is the most difficult train so par fun. training part, yeah. you know? Strengths, yes. everybody can train, but speed is so difficult to train. I think anybody can get strong, honestly. Yeah. Uh, there's limits, of course. Of course yeah. But just give me someone, give me two years, I'll make them strong. Like, yeah. honestly, just work. Yeah. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, but to be fast like that and to remain like focus while tired because I've seen the way you train me is first get tired and now the real work starts yeah. it's like no keep kicking come on pay attention and don't lose a technique no matter how tired you are I don't care if you kick slow kick faster first of all and then don't lose the technique yeah that, Mentally, that, that, that's a, that's a yeah. different part of course when you get tired the techniques goes out of the way you know you're yeah. gonna you're gonna try figure out ways to do it but the thing is 
you have to stay technical because then you last longer. But yeah, that's yeah. A, also yeah. mental, mental. It's so much mental stuff. Mind yeah. fuck that, that, yeah, that oh, is totally. there. Yeah. You know, people gonna work harder when they're, they're tired and they have to let go mentally. To and, that's, yeah. and stay in the technique. That, but that's we, saw that, we saw the same thing in sprinting. Yeah. Well, if you tighten up in sprinting, yeah. you don't go anywhere. So it's that relaxation while you're dying. That's why I like sprinting so much, yeah. especially the 400 meters and the 200 meters already. Yeah. Because on the first 100 meters you can do on your electric yeah. system, you do yeah. one breath and you go, go. you know, yeah. maybe, uh, of course, a couple of breaths. But when you go over past 100 yeah. meters, oh. 150 meters, yeah. then it burns everywhere. Yeah. Everybody yeah. burns, then they have to stay relaxed. And they're gonna yeah. be lactic all over. And, you, and that's what I discovered is that it requires so much focus mentally for yeah. those last 50 meters. Because people think, oh, it's just, you know, like training. And no, you have to stay extremely focused mentally to not just yeah, and stay decompose your technique and stay while with the everything technique. is screaming. Yeah, screaming. Ah! screaming. <laughs> yeah. That was a yeah. perfect um, training toward the, the kickboxing. It felt the same when you are yeah. like getting punched and you, you know, you're so tired, you can barely move. It's like, well, yeah, but. Yeah. That or you die. Which one you yeah. want? All right, guys, let's get at it. It's so, same on the ground, you know, when yes, you're really exactly. in an awkward position. Yeah. Of course, you have to, but you cannot tighten up, you know, you have to you stay in your technique. Of course, you have yeah. to have strength and get out and do the right stuff, but you cannot, yeah. you know. Being able to relax and yeah. breathe in difficult position. We, but see, like all that stuff to me is what I've been trying to explain lately to, uh, to everybody is like, it is so hard to mimic that in the gym. Those yeah. moments when, you know, like you're yeah. so tired, it's like five more kicks and you really don't want to do it. Yeah. But is that or you get punched? Yeah. So it's like, all right, which one do you prefer? Okay, so, uh, and you know, like your whole body freaks out, like your mind is freaking out, you want to quit, but no, five more. Yeah. In the gym, you'll quit because nothing happens. Yeah. In Jiu Jitsu, it's well, then you get choked out. Like, you actually have that fear of, like, if I don't do that, I'm going to get kicked in yeah. the face. Yeah. Like, th there's that extra push that you'll never mimic in the gym. No, I have, I have to say, for me, for fighting, of course, you know, it depends what you want to yeah. do, of course, but the gym is adding to the, to, right. to, to the game, to, to whatever you do, you know, if you scrap yeah, in you know, YouTube. Yeah. And it's, so it, it, it's adding, it's not that you can. Uh, train in the gym what you do on the on the mat it's yeah. it's not there it's different it's different so it adds you it gives you more a little bit more strength in a way but i have to transfer it in my in my so, sparring yeah, exactly. uh, in my uh, technique on the mat or whatever you know i have to transfer it so you can never compare it it's never. not the yeah. same i see how fit you in the yeah. gym doesn't say nothing about how fit you're in the dojo in yeah. the sparring in the fighting yeah. in uh, to me, the training is really building the base so that you don't break doing your sport. Yeah. But you can't, you can't think that the gym will make you a better fighter in that sense. It's like it will allow you not to break so you can train better yeah. to become a better fighter. Give but you at a the good end, structure, I think. Yes, which is obviously extremely yeah. important because you don't want to break and all yeah. that stuff. But some things you have to do in the gym. Yeah. Like, I, I've been talking about rotation work and I work for Strong Fit forever. And the fact is, there's nothing like kicking. No. Kick so. hard <laughs> and boom, really yeah. fast. And oh my God, my abs are so sore constantly. Yeah. Like there's, there's stuff like that you can't change. So no. for me, it's been a, the, the sprinting and the kickboxing has been eye opening, but also because I've done it before, but not at your level. Yeah. And at the end, man, coaching matters so much because doing sprinting with Janina, who's already at a high level, right? Suddenly I was like, oh, I'm yeah. that far back. Yeah. So I felt as retarded with her as I did with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. suddenly, which I love because it's being a white belt, yeah. it is so enjoyable. It gives you a... Uh... Oh, I cannot tell you how enjoyable it is for me to be a white belt. Every time I'm like, oh, yeah. right, you... Oh, I get it. My hands was down. I like it. Uh, it is so enjoyable for me because I feel like learning from everything, from yeah. the ground back up. Yeah. Like, that coaching makes such a difference. Like, yeah, I, I like that also. So even now, you know, you have to be open-minded and <laughs> new yeah. things and, and learning, you know, and learn. That's why, what I like about for the power chain, of course, yeah. again with you, you know, I get so much more idea of things. Ah, it works like that. Yeah. Or, hey, now the puzzle yeah. gets in, you know, you yeah. always know the, those little pieces and suddenly it connected all together. 
Because we so, talk a lot about the nervous yeah. system and then from what I do, yeah. applying to the way y- yeah. you do it, and which I found extremely uh, interesting because you spend a lot of time to, for you, training is not just the physical part. No. It's training the mind of the, of the fighter. It, it, it's a package, of course. Right. You know? it's, it's, it's physical, it's technical. It's, but you spend a mind. lot of time on that, though. Yeah, yeah, a More lot, than a lot of time. Coaches, actually, I, I did all kinds of stuff. Actually, I did a hypnotherapy I'm a hypnotherapist, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't use it, you know. I'm a I mean, but, 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 but I, I, I just study it because there were so many psychological, psychological, uh, yeah. interesting parts of that. That's you know, I can use or right. already Why use it. I already really, used yeah. it in, in, mm-hmm. in my in my coaching to my fighters, and then suddenly I get uh, the whole theory behind it. <sighs> You know, it's just psychological. But no, but why, and yeah, and why does it work with one fighter or not the other? Like yeah. Lomachenko's yeah. last fight, yeah. where he was there, and then you were you were saying it was a little the bit mind game. It's the most important, yeah. in my opinion, it's the most interesting part of fighting. It's the mind game, and I, I trained with, uh, for example, with uh, with Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo. Yeah, that's that's mentally for me, it's one of the strongest at least. I ever saw, and I, I got I got some real great ones. Andy Sau is also mentally very strong, but can be off sometimes, you know. But when he's on, that's mentally also strong. So I got the luck to 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 train with some people who are really mentally next level, yeah. you know. So so, but I like that. And why is somebody so strong there, and somebody with the same talent, right. not? You know yeah. what happens? What you know? Why, the why, what's Where the, the difference? Yeah. What's happening there? And can you influence that as a coach? That's for me important. Can you train it? Can you, can you train question. it yeah. or influence it? Yeah. You know, trigger it, because you can train it, of course, but it also has to be triggered in someone. It's there. In, in, in I think it's almost in everybody. It's there, but then, then right. it's but a that, longer honestly, discussion. Honestly, that's the actually. greatest question. Is that yeah. is how much of an influence can we have? How much of it can we train? Yeah. If we understand the nervous system correctly, can we trigger certain things? Because I've seen things here through our training session where we put some emotions out or stuff yeah. like that that leads me to believe that we can have a bigger influence there than we think we can. That's a I, long I, I, I think so. I, I, think I so. like to think so. That's I like why that. I try to develop there. Because you know, you have to <laughs> develop. You have yeah. always to find a way to perform on a higher level, so I think there's a, a lot more to gain there. You know, the psychological I mean, I mean, side. I think and training the nervous system is something that is not looked at correctly right now. I yeah. think we can do more. Like it there. was funny because when I was there in the, in the States, they were really busy with that part also. You know? I don't think they understand it, it correctly. Uh, okay, I, yeah. you know, I don't go part, there. Yeah. I, I worked with some, some great people over there. I was really impressed also. They were mm-hmm. all so busy with, with nerve system, you know. So uh, and, and that's what I like when I met you. You were also there. So I yeah. picked it up there and then I came yeah. to here and nobody here was is even thinking about it, you know? And then I met you, suddenly somebody was there and he's talking that language. I said, hey, that's interesting for me. That's interesting. The nerve system is is probably... I I think that's where a lot of the answers are, honestly. Like there's there's a lot of work to be done in there. Like there's so much we don't understand. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's, still don't understand a I lot. I don't understand it either. Yeah. I just, I just seen the results on certain things where I'm like, yeah. there's something there. Sometimes I, I just know it's there. I can't tell you why. I mean, yeah. I'm starting to get some educated guesses, but I ju- I've seen the results, so I know yeah. it's there. And but there's, for me, it's a lifetime of. I've always been fascinating with, fascinated with martial arts yeah. and learning and like. Like, training with Zainer was a learning experience because I'd never seen a sprinter in front of me and how fast they actually go. Yeah. On TV, it looks slow. Yeah. Trust me. Compared <laughs> yeah, yeah, to running yeah, yeah, next yeah. to you, you go, shit. You have it's no crazy. idea of the yeah. stuff they can do. Like, even their foot drills when they're next to you, you feel, like, completely, uh, like, yeah. unathletic. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah. I had that feeling with John Machado, the same feeling I had training with you. Is that moment when I'm learning, yeah. and it's that, oh, yeah. you know, like, you hear the angels talking to you because yeah. that... Learning feeling is so, for me, is what motivates me to go forward. Yeah, of course. So I'm enjoying this so much every time. Feeling like a white belt, I'm like, but you know, like white belt, but then you, you get it. Not just getting, you go like, 
oh, I felt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when you talk about, oh, I felt something there. Oh. That, that's, a, that's the interesting part. That's always, oh, that's... I, I, I try to explain it to when I train somebody, suddenly it's there and say, okay, you felt that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel it, feel it. Yeah. Okay, now stay in that feeling, yeah, stay, you know, yeah, yeah. remember that feeling, you know, you have to feel it. But yeah. That, that experience yeah. Oh, is so, that is Good. so much fun. Like I have to say that it's been so much fun. Like every single training session I do with you, like two hours later, I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah, really yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I can't sleep at night. It is but such the, a great I, feeling. I have the same with first, you know, you're not, but that, that's the whole attitude of life, is it? It's about learning and right. everything, be open and say, hey. Ah. You know, right. and then but that's what I like, because when I was making you do the rope pulls and everything, at first I could tell that you were doing it, but also thinking, so what am I doing exactly? Yeah. What am I trying? Oh, I feel this. I could tell like you were yeah. going through your mind as to why I was making you do it. How did it feel? And every time you came back, you learned something. Yeah. So I know we have the exact same attitude to our learning, because I could tell at every session you were doing a bit better, going yeah. like, I get what you're asking. Let me try again. And then every time you made progress. Yeah, that's what I think is important for me as a coach. Is important is to explain why I do something with with right. whoever. I, I you know, I train uh, just like like uh, beginners. I train yeah. every from Everybody top fighters yeah. to to really business people and and just normal people. So I like that. Be I like that range, yeah. especially because. That's the same attitude as the as the world champion, you know. You have to right. learn, but I, I always like to explain everything. Yeah. I'm doing I'm this way. because I'm the same way. I, yeah. I do that a lot. I see a lot of trainers that just give you an, a, a technique or whatever yeah. you train. You know, just say, okay, let's do a left right in my uh, in my language. left right. Okay. Why you give a left right? You yeah. know, there's a reason why you give a left right. That's basic, or left right, left hook, right low kick. There's a, a whole mind, a, a whole, whole technically uh, uh, setup. Yeah. The left right, left hook, right low kick came from somewhere. It's it's the reason. You know, you have to. And it's to host. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And there's, uh, you know, touch kickboxing is about that. You know, you know, you distract there, you, you the follow with the low kick. Uh, once it's, yeah. uh, but how? There's a reason that you do that combination. And if you don't explain it, it's just, you know, right, but a this, combination. This stuff, uh, this stuff Nobody like that knows you what you do. You, ah, left, yeah. right, left, to right, low kick. Which is really... The stuff that I love that you explained to me is like, if you just low kick the same leg, the guy will actually take the pain. But if you distract him and come back, then he's done. But that's, like, uh, that's, yeah. that's nerve system also. That's a nervous system also. That's, that's nerve system also. Yeah. If you hit somebody with one technique so many times, but he's you tough. can take it, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly he's going to adapt how much pain it's yeah. going to do, how much it's going to hurt him. It's just going to adapt it. So you have to distract him from that and then come back to the pain. And then he falls. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then it's falls. collapsing. Yeah. yeah, so technique is not just left, you know, left kick, right hook. No, 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 no. it's There's distracting. It's so then, and then, it's and then you come back. It's story. As a learning experience, it is so fascinating. Like I, it made, like every single session I'm excited because it's, it's not just a training lesson. It's a learning. Yeah, learn, I, for it's, for me, that's martial. life, you know, I, I try yeah. to learn every, whatever, you know, it's not always, oh, no, I'm, yeah. but every day I want to have to, I want to have learned something, yeah. from, maybe from the, from the grocery, you know, somebody tells the me a story, yep. think, hey, that's interesting, you know. Yeah, that makes it you so know, much You know, you have to, you're a learning machine. I've, I've struggled in strong fit for the, trying to come up with rotation work. Yeah. And like, at this stage, I'm like, fuck it, do kickboxing. So yeah. if you're in Holland, please come see Paul, because that's yeah. the simplest way. Like this, and I mean, don't get me wrong, my life is in the gym, so there's yeah. a lot of stuff we can do there. But um, I've been guilty in the past of building such a structure, I forget to specialize. I forget to do sports yeah. activities. Yeah. I've been guilty of that. And I've been guilty of training people like that. Of, because you know, most people that come see me are hurt. Yeah. So my answer is usually the same. Let's rebuild the structure. Yeah. That's what I see continuously. But then at some point, I specialized in that so much that I forgot that you have to specialize in the top of the pyramid, which yeah. means you have to do the sport too. Do the sport, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm so happy to go back to world, uh, especially something I didn't know, like kicking and all that yeah. stuff. Because then suddenly I'm like, right, I have to get in shape and I have to move faster. Yeah. No, you don't get to cruise. You don't get to do the same shit over and over yeah. and over again. You have to do better. 
So kick faster. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And so now my training has changed because now suddenly I have to specialize into a physical activity. So kicking, boxing, yeah. grappling, sprinting. Yeah, and it's, it has to be transferred in movement. In movement. So yeah. now mentally it's a lot, it's a lot more uncomfortable. Yeah. Mentally, because in this stuff, I don't, I'm like, yeah, hands up, fuck, yeah. I forgot yeah, again. Yeah. And so every time I'm like, oh, 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 yeah. but it's... And you have to stay relaxed. And, and have to all stay relaxed. that exactly. information right. you got, oh, that, you have to stay relaxed. And then relaxed. he's like, no, no, relax, just yeah. kick. I'm yeah. like, yes, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, yeah. But at the same time of having the base not getting hurt, because when I didn't pay attention, my right yeah. shoulder starts to hurt. So suddenly I have to have the, bell, the base of the pyramid mm -hmm. and the top. Yeah. And it's a lot more information coming to your brain. And it's so much more fun. It's I, good, eh? I yeah. forgot. Yeah, it's good. I eh? forgot yeah. that feeling yeah. of yeah. almost overwhelmed continuously. Yeah. No, 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 the base. But then the, the top of the pyramid, back to the base, back to the top. But that, that, that's what happened anyway, you know. I yeah. think when you do one thing a lot, you know, you and you, you never add things to it, you, you, get, you get complacent, you, know, it's, it's, you get lazy. Yeah, you, you get, get lazy, lazy and yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if you don't have that feeling of being overwhelmed a little bit, you're being lazy. Yeah. If you're not overwhelmed, you're not doing the work. Like you, you're supposed to go like <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. You, know what I mean? like yeah, yeah, you have to cross the border a little bit. A little bit. You know that feeling of a white belt, like, yeah. oh my God, this is too much? Yeah, Good, yeah. then you're learning. Yeah. If you feel yeah. it's too much, you're probably learning. Uh, if you uh, don't feel it's too much, you're probably not learning. Yeah, out yeah. of the comfort zone. That's, the, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing. We'll do Good. more of this. Yeah. But in the meantime, where yeah. do they get in touch with you? They, uh, you, you can get in touch with me with just uh, Paul Lamotte. Uh, At gmail.com? Uh, yeah. Uh, Lamotte Training and Coaching. You get, uh, you get to, uh, two sides. With, and there's a phone number. Or you can go in my Instagram, you know, Paul Lamotte. Or, Paul Lamotte, yeah. or just uh, DM me at uh, Facebook or Instagram, Paul right. Lamotte. We'll put all that of is, this. That's the most yeah, easy don't wait. one. We yeah. put all of this yeah. uh, on the on the podcast, on the link tree and everything. We'll have all the stuff. Alex is in the back. He'll put all the stuff for uh, Paul and everything. Yeah. But do me a favor. Yeah. Try one session with Paul and understand what I mean when I say that there is certain things in that session you will not duplicate in the gym. Just do it once. Get the idea. And no matter what, by the way. Then you know. Just from a, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And from a human perspective, yeah. learn to kick, learn to box, yeah. learn to sprint, learn I, to grapple. I, yeah, I think so. I think so. That's I think it's an important uh, skill. A whole range of motion. That, that are is, human skills, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Like we all used, we should all have those skills. So learn, even if you never fight, by the way, even if yeah, you yeah, never yeah, spar, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't have to spar. No. But learn to kick, learn to box, learn to grapple, learn I, to sprint. I, I think that's one of the reasons why kickboxing and all the martial arts is so happening now at the moment yeah. because people like that, you know, like that. So. And it's, it's his own thing. Yeah. And, then, and the learning curve is all, like you'll never learn no. all of it. And it's so much. Anyway, so oh. try and then tell me how it goes. Okay. Good. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you.